I just got hold of the Red Magic 3 and thank you to everyone that did vote for me because I managed to buy this for 50% off. And I will have the full review of that, but I need about three days to work on these phones. Uh, right now the Realme X just arrived. So I just wanted to talk very briefly about both of these phones here that I'll be working on over the weekend, reviews next week. This needs, you know, time of course. So the Realme X is very promising, this one. So OLED screen, selling for around about, what, 250 euros. Uh, the build of it seems good. As you can see here, it uh, looks quite nice, the phone. And you've got 48 megapixel sensor. I believe it is the Samsung one, the GM1. I don't think it's the Sony IMX586. It does have Type-C, so it's not like the Realme 3 Pro, I think it is. The Realme 3 that has the micro... USB, which is a big mistake. I have noticed though, if you see when I press in here, I just get the light so you can see how this flexes. Okay, so this, tapping on it, this feels to me like it's plastic on the back of it. So that's the only thing so far. Now I'm having a little bit of trouble with the Realme X here because uh, this is the Chinese version. So I'm trying to get Google Play to install and I've just wasted like two hours trying on these different versions of Google Framework. Google Play Store and I'm still running into this error which is really annoying. So AMOLED panel on this and you can see that yeah it looks pretty good and we'll just check out that focus too of the Zenfone 6. So I can override it by tapping but I'm keeping everything on autofocus here at the moment. So review of that one next week. I need okay like I mentioned time. Everything's all about time. So this phone here best gaming phone so far that I have looked at. So I had the Black Shark 2. The Black Shark 2 is kind of okay, you know, uh, but this is more promising. We've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on it, which is on the top here. And what's interesting about this phone, it's got a couple of special things. So the 48 megapixel camera on the rear of it, uh, this one can shoot 8K video. Now, it doesn't look that good actually. Yeah, the resolution is 8K, but you really have to be in very brightly lit environments. In fact, they mentioned that it's like a beta feature. It says that on there. So we have an intake right here. Okay, so that's where the air comes in and it comes out of the side here and just get that in the light so you can actually see it. So right here is where it vents out all the hot air once you're benchmarking. We've got at the top here, you can see these capacitive touch buttons there, the triggers. So something other gaming phones have too as well. The build feels very good. It is a large phone, it's heavy. And I've been setting it up, just testing it and doing some benchmarks and things. So I've got it set to the 90 um, hertz, the screen AMOLED panel. And you can see, yeah, it is very smooth. It feels almost as fast as the, the OnePlus 7 Pro that uh, I reviewed recently. Check the channel for that. So it's got, of course, uh, stock Android almost. Well, it's just like their own tweaked version of Android, which is good because the Chinese version I was going to buy was absolutely terrible. So I wanted to demonstrate a couple of things here. In fact, I'll show you that about the camera. So under the settings, uh, if you get, go into uh, more settings here, you can see that uh, the photo size on the back, so you can actually put this right onto 48. Uh, the video quality, so here's the 4K, there's the 8K beta. I can see the screen is flickering. Uh, that's just on camera. So far, 1080p screen that it has on here. The AMOLED as well, the 90 hertz as mentioned, 6.65 uh, inches. So not a phone for everyone because we do have big top and bottom bezels, okay? And there's a switch right here for that gamer mode, which I'll go into in just a second, but I just wanted to demonstrate since I'm on the 60 frames per second at the moment that yeah, this is really, really smooth. App launch times seem really good. Uh, I did do and 2 d benchmark as well. And you can see here, very good score. In fact, this is the highest I have seen. I know there's higher out there. Uh, that was on the performance mode. So I will show that. So when you flick the game switch here, which I'll do, you can see we've got a seven pin pogo port right here. Two front facing stereo speakers. So here's the Red Magic game mode. And I can hear the fan. You can hear it. Probably can't pick it up right now. I'm actually using a Rode Micgo directional mic at the moment just so I didn't have more of my voice in the left side of this phone than the right. So that's why I plugged that one in. It's something I'd probably use if I was, say, at um, Mobile World Congress. Anyway, very smooth and fluid here. I'll show you some of the options because there are some interesting things here. So there's the game pad that you can get for it, the controller. Uh, I don't have that, okay? I don't even think it is actually out at the moment. And what we got is some other interesting options along here. So here's the fan options. 
So you can control it, rapid cooling, intelligent adjustment. So it'll control the fan speed based on the temperature and you can disable it altogether. Like if that fan noise is irritating you, now it's only on if the screen is on, okay? So when you turn the screen off, the fan turns off. It makes sense because in your pocket, you don't want it acting as a vacuum, sucking up all the dust particles. Settings in here for the game keys, uh, you can of course adjust the frame rate too. If you didn't want the 90 hertz, you want a better battery life, we'll keep it on auto. Put it on to 60. That's what you can do there, override that. And when you are in the gaming switch mode, from anywhere, so in, so in any game, you simply just swipe and you bring up this interesting menu here. So there we go, there's the options that you can see we've got. So we've got a turbo, oh, there's your touch button controller, so those two shoulder buttons you can configure once you're in game. Uh, the 4D shock, so the haptic feedback motor, uh, very good actually, really nice motor. It's nice and strong and I would rate it as maybe even better than the one plus seven pros. So it's selling for a really decent price. I mean, if you're watching this video, you probably actually know the spec of it. So Snapdragon 855, eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of UFS 2.1 storage is my version. And you've got the other options here. So you have the docking station. That's where the Pogo ports are on the bottom. Okay, if you were gonna be using that, there's an option there for that. Uh, I just tap that in fact. Okay, so you enable it, disable it. And the interesting part here is too, if you go into the different modes, you see it. This it's bringing up this extra screen here for me. So we've got the auto mode, which it is on by default. I'll set it onto super performance, CPU turbo, GPU turbo. And this is all just to try and give you slightly better frame rates in games, but I'm not actually seeing much of a difference. Gaming between this and say the Mi 9 or the Zenfone 6, which I'm currently recording on, it all seems the same to me. Maybe you're getting a more stable frame rate, but really, you know, I don't know. But as a gaming phone, this seems like one of the better ones. So we've got the Aura Band on the back of it that you can disable, turn that on and off. Uh, once I get out of this screen, I'll just demonstrate that. So that's on the back here, the lights, okay. That's pretty cool. LED strip here, you've got so many different options for that to setting in there. Now the fingerprint reader, this is working fine. The build is good. It's a very solid feeling phone in hand. And yeah, I think so far it's looking good. If you're into your gaming phones and this is something that you want, then I'm thinking that, yeah, this is this is kind of better than the Black Shark, definitely. And the Asus phone, which is way more expensive than this one, I wouldn't even bother. I'd go for this one. So flipping that switch brings you out of it. And there is a couple of things I've already picked up on. It doesn't take me too long with my reviews that I've already seen that uh, DRM Info, unfortunately, there's always got to be something with these Chinese phones, doesn't there? Uh, it's a level three cert, so not level one. So no Netflix, if you wanted to watch Netflix in full HD with this nice AMOLED panel, no, you can't do that. Uh, camera API, if you're interested in that too, level three. Uh, the camera's the weakness of this phone so far. I've taken some snaps outside. It takes a very average photo. There's no portrait, but it's not the dual camera setup that you're typically used to. And just real quick too, with the front facing camera, this after all is my, just my first impressions. It seems all right, it's average kind of quality. I mean, it's not too bad, just 1080p video quality you know, on the front facing camera. There's no 4K with the front facing camera, only the rear 4K60 as well. Now the Zen phone, which I'm recording on at the moment, crazy battery life. I've just did my test, 13 hours. I posted the results on Twitter. That's my only other social media account, by the way, and very solid phone. That's why I wanted to test it here, and the focus seems to be good. So it looks like I only have it just mounted in a tripod. It looks like this is a very, very good phone here for vloggers and YouTubers like myself. It seems to be almost the perfect phone. Great battery life. The flip around camera is not a gimmick, as I posted in my review. So I hope to see you back in the channel next week with the review of the Realme X and the Red Magic 3. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think of this video quality in terms of image and of course the audio with the directional mic plugged into the 3.5mm headphone jack. Bye for now.